Merci. Gracias. Thank you so much. And truly, um, even though my name has been mentioned lots of times, the positive is really all of you. And none of this could have come into creation without each person here giving your heart and, and spirit to this work. And one of the things that you don't realize, but Mary Joan and I, who you saw it in, whom you saw in quite a few of those photos, we've been kind of a lot, we've been like leadership team in many ways, and we've all had major health things recently. So Mary fell first, broke her hip, so we say she got rewired on her hip, Joan got a new uh, kind of piping in her heart, and I have new eyes, I recently had cataract surgery. So if you see me walking around without glasses, I have great uh, 2020 and 2025 vision in my eyes, but my close-up vision is, has deteriorated. So I'm still learning how to walk around without glasses, but then to have to be dependent on glasses, which is a challenge. I don't think it's a coincidence that we're meeting this weekend, uh, right before uh, whatever is going to happen in Syria happens. Tomorrow is the day that uh, Pope Francis has called for as a day of international prayer. And I know many other religious traditions likewise are calling for prayer. Just so that each of us can engage in turning around just the chaos and violence and craziness, the attitudes and values that just don't work anymore. So the keynote that I'm just going to add with on uh, that you've received basically uh, is looking at uh, many of the wise people calling around to our hearts and spirits to wake us up right now. It's not a coincidence that we're living at this time on the planet. And it's each of us and all that our gifts bring to bear that's going to make the difference. We don't have that want to turn this around. And uh, we have to take this seriously by prayer, by action, by our own attitudes and values. Let's face it, the attitudes and values of the past don't work anymore. And we're in the process of recreating whole new ways of thinking, behaviors of acting, just to begin to say, this stops with me, and we walk into the future differently. From the be beginning of Kapasitar, one of the metaphors and realities that I've always drawn upon is Kuan Yin the Chinese goddess of compassion. I love Chinese um, mythology. Mary and I were in China for the big women's conference in 1995, and Kuan Yin was ever present with us. And she was the Bodhisattva, or holy one, of the peoples of China. And she became enlightened, but she, was, she wasn't content. And she chose to come back and get her hands dirty in the blood, sweat, and tears of our world until the last and least being was likewise enlightened. So I see Kapasita really doing that. You're in the mess of it. <laughs> you gotta get your hands dirty. You gotta know the sweat and the blood and the tears, as so many of you know that in Fukushima, in Juarez, in El Paso, in all of the places in uh, Africa, all of the places in Haiti where we have to commit ourselves. And we also want to look at what qualities do we need to develop in the spirit of Kapasitar to do this. So I want to draw on several of the great thinkers of this time. And uh, you have the notes here and we're going to go into discussion shortly. So I'm going to sit so I can actually just uh, begin to kind of get into the words of these great thinkers and writers. The first person who can give us some guidelines is Margaret Wheatley. Some of you have read her remarkable book, So Far From Home. I actually first read it in Panama. I was in No, no Electricity with Joji in Darien Province in southern Panama, in the midst of nowhere, in the most beautiful tropical place where Joji uh, ministers to the people. And Joji excitedly said, I have this book that I think is wonderful that the Mariano sisters have been using for reflection. 
And Margaret Wheatley, she's one of the pioneers in organizational leadership. And she says, we are called to be a people brave enough to refrain from adding to the fear and aggression of this time. People who choose for peace. The capabilities and skills we most need are patience, compassion, discernment, effectiveness, and courage. And these are available to us so that we can, if we can see the world honestly and not flee from its harshness. We have to do our work with greater resolve and energy, with more delight, joy, and confidence, even as we understand that this won't turn the world around. Our work is essential. We just have to hold it differently. What matters is how we live, work, and create together in this very moment, in this weekend. And as we accept what is, we become people who stand in contrast to what is, freed from aggression, grasping, and the confusion of our time. With that clarity, we can contribute things of eternal importance, no matter what's going on around us. Another scholar to draw on for guidelines, Juliet was just in Finthorn and had the privilege and joy of meeting Joanna Macy. And some of you I know have either taken workshops with Joanna or have read her books. And one of the books that has touched me a lot recently is her book, Active Hope. And I love the subtitle, How to Face the Mess We're In Without Going Crazy. <laughs> I think that says it. How to face it with joy, not think that it's going to contaminate us with the craziness, but how to really engage it with active hope. And she says, first we have to get a clear view of reality. See what it is. It's a mess. We have to identify what we hope for in terms of the direction we'd like things to move in, or the values we'd like to see expressed. And third, we have to take the steps to move ourselves out of the situation in that direction. And I like this part. Since active hope doesn't require our optimism, we can apply active hope even in areas where we feel hopeless. The guiding impetus is intention, what we really want to do, what we aim to bring about, act for or express. And we focus our intention and let it be our guide. Another thinker is Elio Delia, a Franciscan sister who has the wonderful title of a, a very uh, intense theological piece, The Unbearable Wholeness of Being. And she recently gave the keynote at LCWR, uh, that Mary is a part of LCWR, and uh, looking at our place in the whole history of evolution and what we're all about. And she says, the choices we make in love and for love can co-create our future. Let me say that again. The choices we make in love and for love co-create our future. When we see ourselves as part of a larger whole, <coughs> we act on behalf of the whole of which we are a part. Evolution, which we're all a part of, is thinking and seeing in a new way. We need a new way of being in the world that broadens diversity, as you see here in our room, deepens interiority, that spiritual depth of our beings, and strengthens the bonds of relationality, forming that sense of human community. And then finally, you've heard, many of you have heard me quote neuropsychologist and meditation teacher, Rick Hansen. Your brain, you know, has entrained patterns of the past that don't work anymore. So part of your job right now is saying, okay, I gotta do this differently. I have to begin to engage practices that literally change the recording that I have inside of me, the neural pathways and the whole science of neurophysiology. And so many of the practices that Kapositar uses as well as meditation, breathwork, 
practices in Buddha's brain literally rewire us. So we can't be lazy at these times. We have to aim to rewire ourselves to be these persons of the future. And all of these little tastes of Paul and Gum and Tai Chi and the different meditations that we'll be doing this weekend and what you're learning in the trainings are just all part of that process. We heal and re-entrain all dysfunctional patterns and we begin to act with the greatness of being that we truly have as our call. So when, with some time and practice, we become, as Margaret Wheatley describes, persons who see as clearly as we can, with hearts as open as we can bear, and we keep doing our work because we know it is ours to do. No question about that. And we joyfully say, we can't not do this. We can't not do this. So as, as we meet together for these three days, keep these thoughts in mind of these remarkable scholars, and we want to call the spirit forth in each other. That's what I often, we don't see these gifts in ourselves. That somebody else say, gee, do you realize how remarkable, the remarkable work you do? As you walk around and see the displays that are around her on the tables, affirm the people who put them there. Because often when you're caught in the work, the daily grind, you don't really realize uh, just what you're doing. I have to reread the newsletter I would, every now and then when I'm exhausted from jet lag, just to say, oh, I do that, and those folks are doing that, and this is great. So with gratitude and joy now, let us join together to embody the spirit of our Kapasitar prayer. And I invite you to say this prayer with me if you're if you have that, or look on to your neighbor. So it's on the last page there at the keynote. We join with the earth and with each other, with our ancestors and all beings of the future, to bring new life to the land, to recreate the human community, to provide justice and peace, to remember our children, to remember who we are, we join together as many and diverse expressions of one loving mystery for the healing of the earth 